So now let's look at RC circuits. So in RC circuit, we not only have resistors in the circuit, we also introduce capacitors. And one of the things that you remember on the capacitor is that the voltage between like Q equals CV, right? That is to say that the amount of charge on the capacitor is related to the voltage across that capacitor, right? And the capacitor element looks like this, looks like a parallel plate. This is what we call the capacitor, the, the, the capacitor element. So now we're going to look at like, say, so now we want to look at like kind of how does, how, how does, how does charge flow when you have, this is called an RC circuit. I have a resistor and a capacitor. Now recall that, you know, capacitor like takes charge to store and current is the flow of charge per time, right? So that means in order for the capacitor to build up voltage, it takes time. It takes time to deposit the charge. So what happens is if you hook up a circuit, you're going to deposit charge onto here and that charge will gradually increase, increase the voltage across the capacitor. Because as you, as you add more charge, right, the capacitor will gain in voltage because the, the Q will go up. So the voltage will go up. Now, this thing is a dynamic process. So in general, in a general RC circuit, what's going to happen is, you know, if what you want to think about is you always usually think about steady state. Okay. So initially, um, the capacitor might have no charge, right? So you want to look at the initial state, which is the amount of charge we start with, which will tell you how, what the initial voltage is. And then you want to wait a long time to see what the, what the charge will, the voltage will end up at. Now, basically, if you wait, anytime you wait a long time, the way you want to think about this, because it, it actually takes some calculus to really understand the, the nature of how an RC circuit voltage response is going to work. But if you wait a long enough time, basically what's going to happen is the I through a capacitor is equal zero. There's no current through a capacitor. And the physical ideal of this is that there's no more like changes. You wait a long time, the capacitor is just going to sit at the voltage it's, it's going to sit at forever if you leave it alone, right? It's There's like no more charge. It's like charge isn't constantly being pumped on it forever. It kind of like settles to a value, okay? Now, the other thing is, is current. Um, so the voltage cannot just jump instantaneously across a capacitor. It takes time for the charge to actually show up there, okay? But the current can change instantly. So if you, when you flip a switch or something like that, the current through a capacitor can change instantly. It's just that the voltage cannot do that immediately. So let's take a look at an example, kind of see how this works. In the circuit shown above, the capacitor is initially uncharged. That means the voltage is zero. The Q is initially zero and Q equals CV. So the voltage is initially zero across this capacitor. At time T equals zero, the switch S is closed. For each time to indicate where the voltage charge what the voltage charge and current through the capacitor. So before the switch is closed, the voltage is zero, the current is zero. Does that make sense? Because like there can't be any current because there's no closed circuit. And then there's um there's no uh there's no charge, so there's no voltage on the capacitor. Um and the, the Q equals zero. Immediately after the switch is closed. Now what happens here is the voltage was zero volts, so then immediately I close the switch, it's still zero volts across here. Like nothing has changed on that front because the voltage cannot change immediately. But now we are going to have current flow. Okay. Now if this, um, I didn't give it a number. Oh yeah. So let's say, yeah, we didn't have any numbers, but that's okay. So this is the voltage. So what does, how, how do I know how much current flows? Well, these are in series. So the current through the resistor is the same as the current through the capacitor. The resistor sees the full epsilon, the full voltage, right? Cause by current loop rule, this E plus zero should equal this E here. So the current is equal to V over R, which is epsilon over R like that. Okay. Now, if you wait a long enough time, okay, what happens if you wait a long time is there's no more current. It's closed, but the I is zero. 
The I is zero means the voltage you drop across here is zero, which means then by the loop rule, the capacitor sees the full epsilon voltage at that point. Okay, because the loop rule says that like this drop plus this drop has to equal the voltage. So long time, the I is zero, the voltage is epsilon, and the Q equals CV, which equals C times epsilon. Okay, oops, that's it. Let's take a look at another example. The circuit shown above, the battery supplies a constant voltage V when the switch S is closed. The value of the capacitance is C and the values of the resistance to R1 and R2. What is the current from the battery immediately after the switch is closed? So initially, um, initially uncharged, because if you wait a long time, basically all the charge is just going to recombine. There's no charge here. So initially, there's no voltage here. So then I close the switch and that voltage, remember the voltage does not change right away. So I close the switch. The voltage is zero. What's going to happen is how much current is coming from the battery. Well, if I do the loop rule here, this guy sees the full voltage V because this drop plus this drop has to equal V if I do this loop right here. Right? So the R1 sees the V, so the I is equal to V over R, which is V over R1. Now, when you wait a long enough time, okay, there's no more current that goes through here, so there's no current the I equals zero going through here, right? There's no current going through the capacitor. So then what happens is all the current just goes through this path, okay? Now, these two resistors are in series because they have the same current, right? Because no current is flowing through there. So the current just kind of moves in this loop. And so the current is V over R, but the equivalent resistance is R1 plus R2 because they're in series, okay? So initially, the battery only, the, the voltage source only gets, you know, V over R1. Then eventually you wait long enough and there's no current through the capacitor, you would get V over R1 plus R2.